This Fleet Equipment unscripted interview is presented by Hendrickson, a leading manufacturer of heavy-duty suspension systems and components to the global commercial transportation industry. Visit hendrickson-intl.com to learn more. Hi, everyone. I'm Jason Morgan, Content Director for Fleet Equipment, and welcome to Fleet Equipment Unscripted. Today, we're talking with Jeff Pond, Program Manager at MotorWheel. Jeff, thanks for taking the time. Sure thing, Jason. Now we're going to talk about a safety critical component. Uh, now we're going to dive into the world of slack adjusters. So glad to connect with you here uh, to dive into the details of it. You know, given that they are such a, a, a key safety component, uh, what's important to understand in about their operation and maintenance? Well, I think first off, <clears throat> a brake adjuster or slack adjuster is some of the nomenclature the main function of a brake adjuster is to keep the brake shoe close to the drum as possible so that the timing of any panic stop or any time you need to operate the brakes, it engages quicker because the brake shoe is close to the drum without dragging. So that's the function of the brake adjuster. It also maintains that clearance during the life, either by sensing the stroke or by sensing the clearance between the shoe and the drum, depending on the mechanical operation or the style of brake adjuster or the brand. Mm -hmm. Maintaining the brake adjuster during its operation with proper grease, proper maintenance, check, checking uh, the function of the brake adjuster periodically, like you said, during your pre-trip inspection. Right doing proper measurements because the the brake adjuster is only as good as the brake adjuster as the brake chamber it's attached to and each of those would have a different legal limit of operation so knowing your brake chamber and that measurement whether it's legal limit of two inches legal limit of inch and three quarter or legal limit of two and a half inches you need to know that as you do your pre-trip inspection and know if your brake adjuster is, is operating safely or if it is giving you any indication of drums that are worn, brake lining that is worn, or is there any slop in the brake system such as bushings worn or things like that, that might not let you maintain that proper uh, clearance before overstroking. Right, right. So when you're talking about the clearance there, or two, or the or the allowed the allowed measurements, the around the two inches, is that uh, as as is that the measurement that the slack will allow the push rod to to move uh, in operation? Is that what you're referring to? So typically, the majority of brake chambers out there are either a thirty thirty uh, standard chamber that has a two inch legal limit, even though it's allowed to move two and a half inches. Okay. Or a long stroke 3030 that has a two and a half inch legal limit, even though it can totally move three inches. The DOT would like you not to use that last half inch of any chamber that's on your vehicle, because that's when the torque value goes down and you lose pressure. So they they give you either that two and a half inch measurement or that two inch measurement, or even on front steer brakes, you might only have an inch and three quarter for smaller chambers. Right. And your brake adjuster in proper operation would ride a little bit under that legal limit and maintain like an inch and a half. And when you start approaching two inches, that's when you need to inspect your brake system. Right, right, right. Just give the a little bit of that safety cushion there, especially as, uh, like you said, panic stops or you know improper use of brakes. If you get brake fade or anything like that, or, or how however thin uh, if it's getting thin in the lining there. Are there any other um, safety related uh, features incorporated the slack adjusters that prevent over adjustment or or any other brake related issues? So each manufacturer has a different design in their brake adjusters of whether they're adjusting when the outstroke heading towards the drum or on the return stroke coming back. And inside mechanically, they're sensing that length of stroke or they're sensing that when that shoe hits the drum to maintain that clearance. Uh. 
that's why, because there's different uh, manufacturers that operate differently within their brake adjusters, you should never mix two brake adjusters up on the same axle. It should always be like for like on each side. And it should also be the same measurement, whether it's a five and a half inch from camshaft to the first clevis hole or six inch. You should never mix the lens because you could get different torque values out of each side and you can get pulling brakes or dragging brakes. So you always want to maintain the same style of brake adjuster on each end of the axle. Um, making sure that you, you don't overuse your drums. All drums have a legal limit of 120 thousandths diameter over their initial diameter. So whether it's a 15 inch drum or a 12 and a quarter inch drum or a 16 and a half inch drum, you can only wear that 120 thousandths total of that inside diameter beyond 16 and a half, say your legal limit is 16.620. So that's only 60 thousandths wear on each side. If you let that drum go beyond that, that's going to take away from that stroke you have in your brake adjuster. It'll be harder for that brake adjuster to maintain that stroke. Right, right. When you, and when you talk about the stroke too, because we'll talk about slack adjusters or automatic slack adjusters or self-adjusting slack adjusters, that's what you're talking about there in terms of it's sensing where the, where the stroke's going and keeping, like you said earlier, keeping the expected torque on there and the expected operation that you, you, you'd expect regardless exactly. of the operation. I see. Yep. Uh, when it okay. goes up against the brake drum, the brake shoe. Uh, are there any other features that would help identify wear or potential failure or anything, any other safeguards there that, that are of note? Well, I think because they're automatic brake adjusters, it's only recommended that you back them off or go into maintenance of them only during when you're doing an install of new brakes. Okay. Okay. Or doing a brake job. You should never manually adjust an automatic brake adjuster every week, like they used to do with old manual brake adjusters in the early nineties right. um, or mid nineties, because 95, it was anything that came out of factory after 95 had automatic brake adjusters. So sometimes the old habit is, oh, my brake adjuster is uh, approaching two inches. Well, if it's on a 30-30 and the limit's two inches, you don't want to just manually adjust it. It might be telling you there's something wrong. Either your brake lining's worn or your drum's a little further gone. So that's a sign that you should check the brake system and not just manually adjust an automatic brake adjuster. If you continually adjust an automatic brake adjuster, the fine teeth inside the worm gears and inside the clutch mechanisms mm -hmm. of any manufacturer, eventually you'll wear those teeth down by adjusting it too often. And you could take away from the, the safe operation of that brake adjuster, no matter whose brand it is. Right, right, right. Well, you know, um, it often goes to, I mean, that's, that's a, uh, something in, in, in maintenance all the time, right? Always looking at those upstream or downstream components as to what's happening here and why is it why is it operating in this way and in, in this in this manner. The slack adjuster would kind of be downstream of the or you know upstream of where the brake is. So you'd want to go down and see where that is. You know, I, in that in that uh, regard too, uh, seasonality can kind of wreak havoc on some PM schedules as well. I mean, you look at the heat that a lot of, uh, a lot of the country is going through now. You know, we have, we have winters uh, that are more intense with de-icers and chemicals on the road too. Um, how is the slack adjuster as a part of the brake, brake components um, protecting against any environmental conditions, uh, especially in that brake assembly, any excess heat or any of those road debris or chemicals that, that customers will run into? So all brake adjusters come out as a sealed unit. Mm -hmm. They're using O-rings, they're using boots, they're using different things, whether they're a lift arm or an enclosed operation. They're preventing most of the moisture or contaminants from getting into that brake adjuster. Most of the time in North America and around the world, you don't really get into problems at the extreme heat as long as you're using the proper lubrication that the manufacturer suggests. 
or even the cold. Now you could get into some situations where if the, if the vehicle was in a flood and a brake adjuster was submerged, I would then be suspicious because I'd want you, a lot of times they're a closed unit, so you can't really take them apart, clean them and put them back together. Mm -hmm. So if you did get into that situation, I would recommend maybe taking it off and changing it to new if it was in a submerged flood plane for a long time. Right. Um, but regular moisture and rain, those contaminants uh, are sealed out, but maintaining your grease level inside and you know, greasing every six months or whatever the manufacturer recommends for my, different my, my, mileage cycles. And that way, by filling that cavity with grease around those gears inside, you're preventing any moisture uh, pockets to get in into some air pockets inside the brake adjuster. But you're right, chemicals on the road, especially up in the winters, where you have uh, the different mag chlorides or different salts that are out there on the road for de-icing. All of that is good to, you know, get off and periodically when the vehicles come through in the shop and spray them down and try to get as much of that road debris off that they collect during those winter months. So Jeff, uh, one last question for you too, because I know motor wheel from the brake drum world, but slack adjusters, are you offering any slack adjusters in the market today? We are, Jason. Um, we have our own motor wheel brand that we just recently rebranded, and it was formerly known as the Cruisen Brake Adjuster. Okay. That came over with our sale of motor wheel over to Hendrickson, and it's part of our family in motor wheel now. So we have the brake drums and the brake adjusters under the motor wheel brand name. We kept the part numbers the same to make it easy for our customers in the market but it is now sold under the motor wheel brand name. Right, has that motor wheel uh, uh, power behind it then as well. As well as Hendrickson, as far as our parent company. That's right, that's right. Jeff, thanks so much for taking the time uh, to talk to them today. I learned a ton, I appreciate it. I'm sure I'll talk to you again very soon. Well, thank you very much for having me on. I appreciate it.